The idea was, let's have this world-class musician play in a context that's not really recognizable, and let's see how many people actually pay attention. If you've got something, let it rip. I'm never gonna do this again. Everybody grapples with this idea that you're really a fraud. Like, I'm alive. And that's when it clicked with me, and I thought, these are not superheroes. These are just men that can do super things. This is Matt Del Negro, and you are listening to the new Stripped Down 10,000 Nos. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Today's episode is inspired by a story that I heard. It was given in a slightly different context. It was actually in a sermon, and it was about people noticing things. I heard it. And I thought, this is a really cool story for people listening to 10,000 No's, especially the artists among you who find yourselves at the mercy of gatekeepers deciding what your value is. Are you going to be the one picked for this particular job or anything along those lines? So it's, it's about this experiment, a social experiment that is called the Metro Experiment, or sometimes people call it the Subway Experiment. There is a world-famous violinist named Joshua Bell. Full disclosure, I did not know who he was before I heard the story. He, in this experiment, they set up these secret cameras on a subway platform, and they had Joshua Bell go in a hoodie and, uh, you know, a, a baseball cap, and he goes onto the platform, he takes out his violin, which happens to be a Stradivarius from 1713, I think it is. It's been valued at either 3.5 million or $4 million. So that's a whole other story that nobody recognized it and wanted to steal it on the subway when people are pickpocketing each other for, you know, 40 bucks. But anyway, the, the idea was, let's have this world-class musician play in a context that's not really necessarily recognizable. And let's see how many people actually pay attention. So they did it at rush hour and what they suspected and what they found, it's kind of crazy. They, they figured that a lot of people would be too busy with their own lives, you know, their own schedules, they got to get on the train or they're scrolling through social media or whatever it is, that they wouldn't really hear this musician. You know, any of you that live or have lived in New York City, there are subway musicians and dancers and everything all the time on the platforms and sometimes they're super talented, sometimes not as much. Anyway, people get kind of, I think, uh, calloused to that kind of thing and, you know, don't really pay attention. Anyway, here's this guy, world-class violinist, and he's playing classical music on the subway platform with this very expensive violin. Here are the statistics that they got. At the end of his 43-minute performance, Bell had made $52, another, another uh, thing reported that he made $32.17 from 27 passers-by. Only seven people out of 1,097 people actually stopped to listen. So like 1,100 people and seven of them stopped to listen. One person recognized him and gave him 20 bucks. And the reason I bring this up to you is a lot of times I'll hear from young actors or I have you know actors in my 10,000 Nose Insiders group and they'll come in and they'll say, you know, I gave this great audition. I felt really good about it. I haven't heard anything. And they're, they're down on themselves or they're doubting what they did. I've had it with people that I've, I've put on tape in this very room where I'm doing this episode. You know, I, I coach people, you know, put them on tape. And I know the work was good. I feel good about the work. And they feel good when they leave here then I see them or hear from them, you know, a few days afterward, and they didn't get the results they wanted. And the automatic kind of autopilot that I think a lot of actors do is they, they put it down on themselves not doing well. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't be working on your craft, trying to get better, seeing where you could have done it better, studying what you did. Is there something technical you could have done better? All of that. We always have to be learning. But I think the point of this experiment or the results of this experiment show that people don't always recognize or value things or people that are valuable even when it's right in front of them. You've got this world-class musician, people just ignore him, practically step right over him to get onto the subway. And yet, 
if you're an actor listening to this, or a musician, or a writer who's sending out scripts and not getting any feedback, and you use those results as a way to tell yourself that you're not valuable, I think you're, you're crushing yourself unnecessarily, and I don't think it's helpful. If you haven't listened to my episode with Terry Winter by now, by the time you're seeing this, that one has been out, and it's incredible. This is a guy who won an Emmy Award for this, his work on The Sopranos, creator of Boardwalk Empire, Academy Award nominee for Wolf of Wall Street. You hear his story, and he had years, years of sending out scripts and not getting any any feedback. He, he literally started his own agency and he was his own agent and his own messenger going around to studios and giving his scripts out. I mean, it's a crazy, crazy story. It's, it's very funny. So if you haven't listened, I'd say pause this and go back and listen to it. The point is, if Terry had listened to the results in real time, we would never have the Pine Barrens episode of Sopranos, one of the best episodes in television history. We would never have Boardwalk Empire. We would never have Wolf of Wall Street and many other things that he's done. Tulsa King's first, first season, right? Because people don't always recognize or value valuables in real time. So I think the thing that spoke to me about this story of this social experiment, the Metro experiment, was we need to be better judges of our own work. Accuracy is what we want. We don't want to be delusional. You know, we really want to look at what it is that we're putting out there because it can always be improved. I mean, I, I think about this podcast doing this with you right now. There are many things about it that I would like to do better that I just don't have the manpower, the bandwidth, the it's not a priority enough for me to do those things. So a lot of those things, I let them go. But I don't go, oh, this is, you know, the end all be all. There are plenty of things that I could do to improve it. But at the same time, just because those things aren't being done, it doesn't negate the whole thing. There's something good happening. I mean, I get emails and, and texts and messages every day that say, thank you for this, or this particular conversation helped me. So it's doing what it's doing. It's also, it's doing what it's doing for me. You know, it's, I am the judge of my value and the things that I'm putting out there, you know, do I find them valuable? You know, there's the Rick Rubin book. I got a Rip, Rick Rubin quote up on my wall. I've got his book. His whole thing is, you know, art, it, it's, you, you're making it for an audience of one, and that's you. And if the rest of the world happens to like it, great. But a lot of times they won't. And I kind of think that's what I'm getting from this Metro experiment. You know, you go in, you do what you do with your audition, and then it's gonna go whichever way it's gonna go, depending on what they need. Literally at the time that I am recording this, I had a callback for something the other day, right here on Zoom. Felt great about it. I would imagine by the time you're seeing this, I will know whether I got that job or I didn't. Right now, I don't know. All I know is what I did in the room, or in the room, this room, on the Zoom. I know the direction they gave me. I feel that I took it and I pivoted. But my essence, my thing that I offer, may not be what they wanted for that particular role. I don't know. I can't control that. I can't worry about it. But the thing that I won't do, and I probably used to do in the past, is look at myself and devalue myself and be down on myself if that result doesn't come in the way that I want it. So I'm saying to you, whether you're out there and you're in, uh, you know, a real, uh, you know, like a, a, you're on a real uh, a tear right now, you're getting all the gigs that you're going in for, or whether you're in a little bit of a valley and you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm putting out these auditions, I'm not getting any feedback, or I'm writing these scripts, I don't hear anything back when I send them out. I'm saying to you, do the best that you can do to to value the actual thing. The context of it is, is a whole different thing. Joshua Bell, I think it was the night before he did this experiment, had a concert in Boston where it was $100 a seat and it was sold out. Now he's on a subway, nobody's stopping to listen. 
I, I think of Taylor Sheridan, who I, I worked with on Wind River. That was his first movie that he wrote and directed. And I talked to him. He had been writing forever, and you know, all of you know him now. Now he's got an empire. Now he's worth you know over a hundred million dollar uh, contract that he got for Yellowstone and and uh, all the rest of the shows. I mean, he's literally got an empire. But he was the same guy, doing writing all those scripts, even when I met him. That was 2016, I believe it was, 2015 or 2016 when we shot that. And he had already had, Sicario had been, you know, uh, already directed by someone else to a lot of success. Hell or High Water, he was nominated for an Academy Award for his screenplay, but it wasn't directed by him. And then Wind River, he was directing. Even where he was then compared to where he is now is a different thing. But what about before that? He wrote those scripts when he wasn't in favor. Did that make those scripts less valuable? No. They were what they were. They just weren't seen. And then once someone sees one of them, now they go, oh, what else do you have on that hard drive? And you go back and you see and you're like, wow, he had this, 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 and this. And all of a sudden he's a household name. So that can be you as well. So that's what I'm saying. Stop letting the gatekeepers determine your value. Look in the mirror, see what you can improve, see what you've already done, and congratulate yourself for the things you already have done and build on those wins. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate you coming over here or watching this on YouTube, however you got to me. Just want to let you know a couple of our offerings. If you go to 10,000knows.com, we have the 10,000 Knows Insiders community, which is a virtual community where I meet with artists once a week, every Monday for an hour over Zoom. And then every month I bring in an industry VIP. You can also check out my book, 10,000 Knows, How to Overcome Rejection on the Way to Your Yes. If you're interested in private coaching, whether in person, person or over Zoom, I do that as well. For all this stuff, email info at 10,000knows.com. In the subject line, tell us what you want. We do our Let's Shoot the Rehearsal weekend intensive on-camera retreats in New York City and elsewhere throughout the year, every couple of months. So check that out. You can also email us to join the newsletter. I will not flood your inbox. It'll only come once a week. Love to have you in our circle. Thank you for listening. If you really dig it, Tell your friends, put it on social media. If you feel like it deserves a five-star review over at Apple Podcasts, please give us one there. Once again, thank you, and we'll see you next week.